was introduce a new method, and I'm calling it the Dublin method only because the different parts of it happen to fit the acronym of the city of Dublin. But I could have easily changed it and called it Berlin and used R for radio frequency. So I suppose what I'm trying to get across in many ways is we have all these things in our own clinic. The patient brings their own blood to you to use as blood groups for PRP. German rollers only cost like a euro and you don't even have to use the laser if you didn't want to. Omninux Red 633 light is very inexpensive also. So here is an immediate new treatment you can use in all your patients that works. And um, I have patients running 9 to 12 months now. The D is for derma roller. The U is ultra um, pulse laser. Now you don't really have to use the laser. It's just because I started from the laser that I decided to see could I make the laser better. B is the blood factors. Li is light. And don't underestimate for a moment the power of 633 light. It really is a magical wavelength. I suppose a lot of doctors know it already from treating basal cell cancers and from photodynamic therapy. But I'll show you in a moment some videos of fibroblasts actually moving with that light. Fibroblasts, as you know, are the workhorses of all the cells. This, these are the cells that will synthesize the new collagen in the body. And they have a critical role in wound healing. And all the things we're doing to the skin in order to make it regenerate is, of course, we're wounding the skin. It's the same thing as if you watch your child fall off a bicycle and cut their hand or their head. We're using this process in order to make the body heal itself. So by using derma rollers, we're just wounding the dermis in order to form new collagen. And really, in a way, that's half of what lasers are doing also. Now, these are fibroblasts. So And what we want to do with fibroblasts, of course, is to have lots of them in the body. Because if you just do PRP on its own, you're just going to have a lot of bosses telling fibroblasts what to do. But if you don't have the fibroblasts there to do it, you're not going to get as good of an effect. If you do PRP on its own, and just inject it in the skin, it'll last for about two or three months. If you do a derma roller before it, do PRP on exactly the same day, it will last six months. And I suppose in some ways, that's common sense. And um, these are very interesting cells. You can see that um, they're often actually double cells. They've got pseudopods, they can move around the body, and we can use this ability of them being motile and moving around the body to get a better effect. Derma roller, you don't really need a resurfacing laser. A derma roller will, will do a lot of this on its own. It might do it in, the, in two or three treatments, and you really have to get it done properly. There's no point in using needles that are only not 0.5 millimeters. Use 1.5, use two. If the patient bleeds and they feel sore, brilliant. That's what you want. The dermis has blood vessels and nerves, so you want to be down there hurting the patient. The patient can't do this themselves at home. And um, if you're using an anesthetic cream, don't use things like Emla. That's only 5%. I mean, the patient's going to be sore. Use 23% um, lidocaine, use BLT. Use things that make it totally painless. We know that cells that are together can't grow any longer. We know that cancer cells grow because they lose the ability of recognizing when to stop growing. Now, cells that touch each other send signals to stop growing. If we make a break within the cells, what happens is the cells in this monolayer, the fibroblasts will start growing across. And if you make, obviously, hundreds of little indentations with no price really to yourself and with no risk to the patient, then obviously if you were to do nothing else but just derma roller, the skin will tighten up. But the ability of just using the needles of mesotherapy will cause skin tightening on its own if you were to use nothing. And in many ways, derma roller is, is like that. Now PRP is an interesting one from the point of view that most people who talk about it, you don't know whether to believe them or not. 
And the second thing is, whenever you look at people doing it, particularly on YouTube, you begin to wonder, is this a bit of a gimmick or is it working? Now, if you go back to where it all started, which is in orthopedic surgery, and you go on to YouTube, you'll notice that all of the orthopedic surgeons inject in hemoglobin colored PRP, but most of the estheticians are injecting in yellow plasma. You really have to get this layer in the center. Now the problem is, if you go down too deep, it becomes too strong. If you go up here too much, it's too weak. Now one of the fantastic things is that if you take off 10 mils, that's two um, five mils, or even um, five mils, two 2.5s, the little blue tubes, um, you can have a strong and a weak. I found particularly if you put strong in the periorbital area, you'll get clumping. If you want a patient who's only 30 or 35, then you're almost better using the weaker one all the way through their face. If you've got an older patient and you want to use this instead of dermal fillers, use this instead of wrestling, use this instead of hyaluronic acid, then use the strong one. And patients actually quite like this. You can see when I'm injecting there, the color of my solution, even though I'm blocking it with my finger, is actually quite dark. And I'll show you later on that probably we shouldn't use it too strong in that area. Blood factors that you are synthesizing and that you're getting, and I use 10% calcium chloride with the sort of blood extract, but you, there's growing evidence you can just use lignocaine and it'll work as well. So if you use calcium chloride, use it buffered or it's, it's painful, 10%, uh, you release these different ones. Fibroblast, growth factor is the one you're looking for. Keratinocyte is as well connective tissue. These are your good ones. Uh, vascular endothelia, it's good as well, but probably you're not going to be having differentiated tissue. So as a consequence, you want to try and target the ones that are going to go for collagen. And that's where the 633 light comes in, because you're injecting it deep into the sort of lower dermis, and when you put the 633 light, all the fibroblasts move up, and they will become motile with, with these ones. This is just a little quick video for people who aren't used to doing platelet-rich plasma to, I suppose, show people that all you're doing is taking out um, some blood, you're injecting it into the wrinkles at the level of the dermis, and as a consequence of new collagen growth, then you will grow out the wrinkles. So that when you do it originally, um, almost like Sculptra, it looks good for a few days, then it disappears because the saline in your solution will disappear, and the plasma, and then new collagen grows in the area. These are the different regulatory growth factors working on the plasma. 633 light. 633 light, this one that I have here is an expensive one. That's about 15,000, but you can get them now much cheaper. But I think with 633 light, um, you really have to have it at the right strength. Now with 633 light, this is a very interesting um, video. And what we have is a keratinocyte and an obstacle and the light source. And believe it or not, the um, fibroblast will actually jump over the obstacle in order to reach the pulsing red light which is a phenomenal thing. We've only discovered this recently, that these fibroblasts that we know could move around the body, if you put an obstacle in the way, they will actually jump over them to reach the red light. When I did the trial originally, I um, took two different groups. One was my standard laser resurfacing group, and the second was a group that I added adjunct treatment of Derma roller to stimulate fibroblasts, the platelets to grow the fibroblasts, and then the red light in order to bring the fibroblasts exactly where I wanted to. All the patients were broke down into a three-week study. They all got Botox 
one week beforehand. I use dashboard, particularly in the eyes, this gives a very, very good effect. Don't do it at the same time as you do the other things, or obviously the Botox or the dashboard will run, and you'll, it'll be into zygomaticus major, and you'll have a patient looking like they had a stroke. So phase two was a mixture of the three means of forming fibroblasts, and then phase three was the laser at, at a low um, strength. We can see here just PRP, the derma roller, and near red light, and then the CO2 light and the post neurotoxins afterwards. And the results were actually quite interesting. Um, somebody had asked me as well, why do I use ultralays? Um, I'll, I'll show you this little video. Um, ultralays is, is a special type of laser. Lasers come either in continuous wave, super pulse, or ultra pulse. Ultra pulse is more expensive. Now you'll get cheap lasers at about 30,000 that use continuous wave, but if you want to be precise, then the computer pattern of the laser also can make a big difference. Probably somebody would ask that, why do you use a laser at all? Um, because if you use the German roller, you're going to get the same effect. Well, the laser also, because it heats the outside skin, you get an immediate contraction. And when you're using the laser, you can actually see the skin tightening in front of you. If you use German roller around the eyes on their own, you could never ever achieve the effect that, um, that a laser would. When I was doing the study, I decided to use the Dover method of um, scaling the patients for um, photo aging. So the higher you are on the scale, the worse off you are. And the Dover scale runs a patient on a positive and a negative scoring chart. And um, we did skin biopsies on all the patients. I also then, because it was in the bottom half of the face, using the GAIS, that's the standard scale for to see how much aesthetically a patient is improved. Five would be the optimal result you're looking for. One is obviously what you don't want because that means the patients, you left them worse than when you began. Now, these would be typical examples of what I had after the Dublin lift. The interesting thing is I included this one because this was one of my problem patients. Because I used the platelets too strong, I ended up with this clumping for quite a little while. And in the end, believe it or not, after about four weeks, six weeks, I put in very dilute dexamethasone to free it up. Because there is a fascial plane underneath the eye that normally the fat pad herniates out into. And if you put in quite strong plasma there, um, I think it gravitates down and just forms collagen in, in, in the bottom middle area. Now out of 27 patients, just two did this. But unfortunately, this was one who um, gave me a lot of bother because of the fact that it had happened to her. Um, this here would be a fairly normal result that we had for most patients. I also use a wrinkle severity rating scale. It's sometimes very hard to know how to judge patients because you can either get your friends and see what they think, you can get the patient and see what they think, you can take photographs and compare them. And um, this WRSR is a standard international rating scale. And this is a patient who, let's say, she was a cancer patient actually who came in to me, and I did the Dublin lift in her, and she got quite a good result in a way that certainly the laser would never have been able to give me. The laser would have done her upper eyes, but wouldn't have been able to do her lower face. Again, this is a fairly standard result from it. You can see with the platelets on board, she has a more youthful look, and um, it almost fills in the same place as dermal fillers would. In terms of the first scale, when I, when I ran the patients, the interesting thing is that this is the lift against my normal CO2. And in terms of, I suppose, the results in terms of photoaging, believe it or not, the laser is probably better around the eyes. Um, in terms of the number of weeks that sort of have passed and the effect, if you remember from that scale, the lower you are, the better you're off. So the patients that remain high here on the Dublin lift probably will be better off 